Hey guys, so as much as this is a technology lesson, it's a business lesson. And what I want to discuss today is the progression of industry and how industry will progress in a sharp spike in its nascent stages, in its beginning stages, if that's the right word. And then as things progress, as things progress, the rapid change in the, in the industry the curve flattens out. What does this all mean? When something is new, you get a lot of quick changes. As it becomes more mature, the changes drop off and it becomes very consistent. So you see that now in the software development space in the web stack. So let me draw something here. All right, so let's take a look at this quickly. So web tech dev trends or web tech technology development trends. So you see at the bottom here, 1994, 1998, 2003, 2012, 2018. And this is the rate of um, development or change in the technology stack. So from 1994, 98, there was a big change in terms of how, what was coming out in terms of web tech. So like, in 1994, a little bit before, we used to do things with, uh, you know, where do I put this? We used to do things with CGI, Common Gateway Interface Programming with Perl to create web apps. And then in 96, I think it was, then you saw the invention of uh, uh, Classic ASP, which was a big game changer because that, that was the first time that page type of web app development came, came, came into the marketplace. And then from classic ASP, we had JSPs and we had all kinds of page-based technology and it, it evolved from there and it evolved from there. And there was a steep change, steep change, you know, in terms of the browser wars, et cetera, there's all kinds of stuff I could go on for hours, but I'm, I'm just, I just want you to get the gist of this. So then we saw some steep change, steep changes. Now between 1998, maybe I should have put this a little bit steeper, this curve. There were some big changes between 98 and 2003, where we went from table-based design. All this area was uh, tables, was used for web design and web app development uh, in this whole area here. And then between 98 and 2003, uh, the uh, web standards movement came about where everybody was pushing really hard to standardize web technology because before everybody was frightened and was fragmenting between uh, Firefox and Microsoft. Uh, Chrome was still not a thing yet. And, but what happened is by about 2003, we, see, we saw a consolidation where we saw um, uh, CSS layout really took, took form. And at that time, we had something called uh, X, XHTML uh, became the thing, XHTML. XHTML is basically XML structured to look like HTML. I always thought this was going to get killed and eventually got killed. But I remember a friend of mine who had been very active between 94 and 99 about in web design and development. And he left the field and he came back to it around 2003, 2004, and he was flabbergasted at how much things had changed. The whole process of web design had changed between 98 and 2003 in a big way. All the skills and the practices, all the things that we did, well, most of it were almost um, totally out of date once you hit around 2003, 2004. That's when you had uh, the web standards and CSS-based design really took over. So that was cool. That was a huge leap ahead. This may have been a spike higher. And then we sort of cruised along with XHTML and CSS layout. And, you know, there were some changes, but not huge in my opinion. Then 2012 hit. 2012 was big because it was a game changer. To me, 2012 is um, really where the web finally totally matured in terms of web tech, web app development, web technology. And that's when you had... HTML5, 
5 came about, HTML5, which includes, of course, CSS3. These two technologies basically replaced XHTML, and it totally made the web uh, platform, web browsers and so forth, a viable platform for application development, serious application development, because with the advent the invention of HTML5 and CSS3, HTML5 brought all these tools that come into place, which allows you to do things like progressive web apps, because you can basically utilize the web browser uh, almost like a thick client type of application, meaning you could do local storage, you can uh, do very advanced animations, all kinds of cool things that you couldn't do before. So this to me is a huge game changer, HTML5, CSS3, in terms of not just the web world, but the entire development world, because this sets the stage, this is the platform for what modern app development is going to be like, uh, I think, going forward, especially with, with projects um, like with PWA, like with projects like Flutter, uh, this kind of stuff, don't forget about Flutter, this kind of stuff uh, really changes the game, because it affects mobile app development as well, because now with HTML5 and CSS3 technology, uh, very advanced mobile apps using those technologies are possible, which can compete in many areas with native mobile. So that's very cool. But you notice how the, as we progress through time, the rate of development of the technology has really flattened, meaning you know, massive innovations and changes to the technology. But as we get past 2012, things have really plateaued in terms of the web tech. It's... Um, there's incremental um, changes and improvements, of course, but I don't see the huge drastic changes that we saw between 94 and 212. I think it's really flattened out. So that changes a, a lot where now, back in the 90s and early 2000s, you know, two or three year old technology uh, was uh, really dated technology. It's not the case anymore. It's not the case anymore. Um, you can produce you could pull up, excuse me, you could pull out a book uh, on web tech from 2012 and 15, 16, and it will still be 99% up to date, if not 100% up to date. Because the fact of the matter is that this technology has, uh, HTML5, CSS3, that implementation, we've, we found ourselves at a plateau, meaning the rate of change has really flattened out. So it's... Uh, it's a good time to be a developer because when things changed every six months or every year, it was a real headache. And it was a real headache because had, there was a constant need to re-implement things and, and there was a constant need to constantly be totally up to date on all these new technologies. Like when you went from Perl CGI to ASP, that was a huge change in the way you even thought about writing code. Then when you went from... Uh, um, when you went from table-based design to CSS layout, it was a huge change. You had to whole, totally retool the way you did things, et cetera, et cetera. But now that we've reached this HTML5 CSS3 plateau, there are changes, but it's not a huge change. And in fact, what we did in 212 is totally 100% good in 2018, five, six, six years later. Whereas back here, what we did in 98, it was totally different from what we did in 2003. It was like you had to game over. So that's cool. So just want to let you guys know, if you were uh, in this space, the HTML5, CSS3 space, you're, you're going to be good. I think that technology is going to be good for many years to come. That is for sure. Now, this uh, rate of change, where you see early life in the industry, rapid change, and then it's the, the curve. This is a curve here, this line. It flattens out over time. This is normal. This is how it is. I remember I first learned about this in the 90s of a good friend of mine, engineer, um, uh, chemical engineer. And he was telling me how all the major discoveries in chemical engineering was, this was in the 60s, 60s, 70s, 50s, 60s, 70s. And you know, at that point, there hadn't been hardly any changes since that time because it had went through that curve, right? You know, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and then it kind of flattened out. You know, I'm not a chemi chemical engineer. That's what he told me. That's what happened. And you've seen it with uh, martial arts, right? When in the early 90s, 
uh, with the UFC and the grapplers came in there with Gracie Jiu Jitsu and they started um, educating the whole martial art world about fighting arts and what was real, what wasn't real, how to train it properly. And you've seen that evolution. It started out first mixed martial arts where literally a kung fu guy would fight a, a wrestler, or a boxer, or a taekwondo guy, whatever. And then now it's evolved where it's MMA, where it's kind of a balance of striking and grappling. And you don't see this rapid evolution in that arena, I think, that you did see in the early 90s. Uh, in the early 2000s, we've kind of, it's kind of settled. Just like every other technology, every other industry, there's this period early where it's rapid innovation and it's sort of the curve flattens out. Um, where you see these huge opportunities business-wise is in the early stages, if you can catch it, but it's also highly risky because risky you don't know which direction is going to work. I can tell you, in this time frame, a huge amount of technologies a huge amount of companies went boo, 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 boo. Now you've seen that with cryptocurrencies now. We're like in cryptocurrencies. We're like in this stage here. Crypto has just started. Nobody knows how it's going to actually shake out, how big it's going to be, what's going to happen. And I can tell you from experience in different industries, you're going to see most of the players that are in crypto today will not exist in 10 years. There'll be distant memories. Just like a lot of the big players in this time, didn't, don't exist. Like back in the old days, we used to have, um, everybody remember Flash? Remember Flash? Flash is dead. That Flash. We used to have something, we used to have something called Code Fusion. Now they never had a huge market share, but they were important. Pew, pew, gone. CGI, gone. Classic ASP, once a very important technique, gone. VB, Visual Basic. This was huge in the 90s. That was for developing apps for Windows desktops. Pew, 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 gone. So you see that. You see that in your early stages in any industry. You see rapid change in tech. And you see how things fall out and disappear. Good thing now is HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript. They've been around for 20 years. Well. They've been around to 212, but the original versions, they, you know, these technologies were first conceived of uh, 20 years ago. JavaScript's been around since 96, and it's becoming just more and more and more important as I think these two languages as well. So one other lesson to take away from this vlog, if you're looking at technologies, you're not sure what languages to learn, because you're, you know, first of all, it's a false fear because once you learn programming, you'll be able to jump to any language or any platform that you choose to if you're trained properly. So don't worry about that too much. But if you are concerned, you're wondering which language is the probably the safest bet for the next 10 years, it's going to be the web stack. It's going to be HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript. Learn those three. You can't lose because it allows maximum job potential. You can uh, build websites, you can build web apps, you can go on PWA, you can do all kinds of different things. It ain't going away. So, um, and it's actually a good thing that it's plateaued like this because the stability allows you to, uh, the stability in the technology stack uh, allows you to plan medium long term better. So you can set yourself up for something really, really good, you know, financially. You know, at the end of the day, I think most of us are learning this stuff and doing this stuff to make a living. Now, my career going back to 94, when I wrote my first web page, when I started writing code, um, my investment in the web technologies has been invaluable to me. My ability to program has been invaluable to me. As I've mentioned in other vlogs, learning to code is like learning a superpower. It's one of the most important things you can pick up, so I highly recommend it. All right, that's it for today. Ciao.